He brought everything back, all the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with the... Oh, look at this. I have a package. Oh, and it's from Dollar Shave Club, the very sponsor of this episode. A product that I am proud to endorse because I can honestly say that I've been a customer of theirs since 2013. They've grown up a lot since then and are now offering shave, shower, and oral care starter kits, each of which you can get right now for just five bucks. Now, admittedly, I've been a four-blade customer for the past five years, so I'm excited to try out this six-blade executive premier shaving experience. So I thought I'd give you guys a little glimpse into my morning routine. And no matter what your routine is, Dollar Shave Club has everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. So get your starter set for five bucks today by following the link in this video's description if you want that babish smooth dome. But for now, what do you say we make us some roast beast? I'm going to start by making a stuffing. I have some apple sage pork sausage here that I'm going to bust up and brown down, aka break it up into little tiny pieces, place in a nonstick skillet, and cook to a lovely golden brown. We're not going to worry about fond in this case because it's a nonstick pan and there's nothing to deglaze. Instead, we're just going to throw in our aromatics. I've got some red onion and chopped celery here. We're just going to sweat these for three or four minutes until they are soft and translucent. See how we can toss them in the air to try and impress our internet audience? And now it's time to address the figurative meat of our stuffing, the bread. I'm going to go with these day-old cornbread muffins. Not only are they going to have the perfect consistency, but all that extra exterior surface area is going to help them retain their shape. Now it's time to mix it all together, and I am not repeating mistakes of yore. I have an appropriately large-sized bowl ready to go. And into this, we're dumping about five cups of cornbread bread, our aromatics, our sausage, and maybe a cup and a half of chicken stock. And then because the center of the roast beast looked pretty red, I'm going to try and up the red content with some cranberries. By now I'm sure you're wondering, what is the roast beast? Well, I submit that it is a turkey. And obviously it's a cartoon animal, but it's got legs, wings, and it's boneless. So I'm thinking that by deboning the majority of the turkey, but leaving the wings and legs intact, and then making a roulade with our boneless turkey, we'll at least have a visually close approximation. So as you can see, starting at the backbone on one side of the turkey, I'm making shallow cuts around the carcass, trying to remove as much meat as possible until I hit the breastbone. Then I'm going to repeat on the other side, again stopping right before I hit the breastbone, and then being very careful because there's no meat between the breastbone and the skin, and it's important not to pierce the skin here because it's going to be the top of our roulade. Just keep making careful, shallow cuts until you have emancipated the carcass. And right here, you've got the perfect thing to make stock for gravy. There's a ton of cartilage, meat, and bone. And while I'm leaving the bones in the drumsticks, I'm going to remove the thigh bone. To do that, you need to cut down the length of the bone, find the joint, warm your knife in between the bones, and there you go. Sometimes it helps to scrape down the side of the bone like this so you can find the joint more easily. Then once I've got the second thigh bone out of there, I'm going to repeat for the first wing bones. I know I'm not being terribly thorough, so go check out Chef John's video for how to debone a whole turkey. The last step we're going to do is place some diagonal cuts on the breasts and unfold them up toward the neck so we have a bit more even dispersion of meat. And if your meat's looking particularly craggy like mine, I'm going to go ahead and give it a good pound with a meat mallet or a fry pan, and then it's time to stuff. And most importantly, remember that we forgot to season with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper, remove the stuffing, and get that out of the way. Make sure it is coated generously and evenly all over before piling in the stuffing of your choice, or you might end up with a pretty bland turkey roulade. And after all this work and how pretty it's going to turn out, that'd be a real shame. So now we're going to fold the turkey onto itself like big meaty French doors, and then it's time to start a tying. Place butcher knots or slip knots or whatever bullshit knot I'm tying right now at one inch intervals up the length of the bird, tying around the thighs particularly tightly because we want them closer to the body, just so they cook a little bit more evenly. Then I'm going to tie the drumsticks together, snip off the excess twine, season the exterior liberally with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. I don't want a bland bite in this bird. And then I'm going to hit the whole thing with a little bit of vegetable oil. This is going to help the skin brown more quickly, since this tom is going to spend less time in the oven than a traditional turkey, because it's smaller, and that's how heat works. But much like a spatchcock turkey, I'm going to tuck the wingtips underneath the body and wrap the ends of the drumsticks in a little bit of foil. This is just going to help them to keep from burning. And look at that. It kind of looks like the roast beast, doesn't it? And now we got to do the roasting part at 450 degrees for 15 minutes and then turning the temperature down to 350 Fahrenheit and roasting for an additional hour and a half to two hours until the thickest part of the stuffing registers 155. Now we're just going to remove this guy from the rack here. 
I don't know, it's kind of a two-man job here. I wish I had a little bit of help. Oh my, oh my god, you guys, look who it is. It's Rashid. He came all the way downtown just to help me get the turkey out of the thing. So with our two tongs working as one, we're going to put this on a cooling rack for about 30 minutes. Thanks for helping me out, Rashid. I miss knowing that you are sleeping just down the hall from me. Anyway, like I said, 30 minutes. We're letting this guy rest. We want those meat fibers to relax and for the internal temperature to rise to 165. Then, for the first time in a long time, we are resurrecting the cross section. And what a cross section it is. It's like a whole Thanksgiving dinner. And now now little who's before we can feast, all that's left to do is carve the roast beast. I'm not sure what that was an impression of, but whatever. We're hitting this guy with a little bit of gravy that we made from the stock that we made from the carcass. If you want to see how to make turkey stock, check out the link in the upper right hand corner right now. And we got ourselves an obvious clean plate club member here. Juicy meat, crisp skin, and holiday cheer all in one rolled up package. Oh, oh that's cold. I don't want to fog up the lens, so it's got to be cold. Oh my god, here we go. <clears throat> got some shaved butter here. Oh, I didn't think. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Not the time. I'm so cold. Oh my god. Come on. Oh, I'm so cold. Okay, all right. I have to finish the rest of this off camera. What do I do now? <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm wearing so I don't know. I have no idea what to do. Tish. <sighs> oh, it's so cold. Oh my god. This will be a Patreon exclusive. When he takes off the tracks, get, get over here. Dollar Shave Club. 